I'm gonna be so upset if this audio is messed up. This, these headphones in there, it kept screaming in my ear. Like, you guys have no idea what I just went through trying to set up this audio. But anyway, hey, welcome back. Welcome back. I'm very excited to be doing another chatty video with you guys. I don't know if I've said this before, but I do like to partake in a recreational cannabinoids. Um, it's enjoyable for me and I feel like it helps loosen me up when I do these. Otherwise, I will overthink and overanalyze. So if at any point you're like, Jazz looks, her eyes look a little dried out <laughs> or, you know, she's seems like she's going on a tangent just bear with me okay I'm I probably am going on a tangent and in my head it probably feels really valid so anyway today we're going to be talking about friendship breakups and I guess really touching on if they're really much different than like a regular breakup with like a partner like a, somebody that you're dating because I feel like there are like a lot of misconceptions when friendships end and I don't know in general this is like a really interesting topic because I feel I feel like I'm the one that makes it more <laughs> more intense than what it is but I have had a lot of friendship breakups in my life and yeah I'm like oh it's almost as bad as saying like you've broken up with a lot of people it's like why <laughs> why does it keep happening but the truth is like everyone's answer to this is going to be so different and a lot of it can do with the type of people that we used to be um our interests changing or you know someone burned somebody or jealous there's just like so many reasons that friendships end i haven't had a friendship end in a long time but i do feel like i'm going through a bit of a friendship breakup right now if you will and i don't want to get into the details of who what why when how because i do believe in having some semblance of privacy when it comes to the internet i do feel like this has been a one of the hardest friendship breakups for me to have at this point actually I feel like pretty healed from it and I'm just like you know okay things happen people change we go different ways and like the things that we used to align on we might not align on anymore <laughs> yeah at this point I've moved on and I feel like though that this was probably one that I've learned the most from about myself and just like about people in general and things that I thought were normal in friendships that aren't actually normal in friendships in my case i feel like the reason that i've lost a lot of friends gosh it sounds so bad when i say it that way it's not that i've lost them right it's more like distance just starts to come into the picture and it's never like fuck you i hate you like you did this to me i mean maybe when i was like 18 you know but at this point in my life they just sort of start to disappear it's like little by little you're not talking to them so much anymore or maybe there is a conversation that's had and it kind of leaves things like in this gray area <laughs> i am definitely under the influence right now and i feel like i'm overthinking what i'm saying so much oh i was saying why friendships end i totally just forgot what i was talking about so i feel like the reason they end for me is because either i changed and let me tell you i've been through a lot of different versions of myself just in the last decade the things that i like to do the places i like to be um my hobbies things i like to do in my downtime like so different over the course of the last 10 years i mean constantly changing and so some of the people that i would hang out with regularly no harm to them no anything like they're great but I just am not really interested in the same things that they are and you start to feel that divide when it comes to conversations and things you're inviting them to and things they're inviting you to and you're like oh I don't want to do that at all and they're like oh I don't want to do that at all like for example who was I talking to oh my friend Tabitha who I love like I love this girl actually does this make any sense at all like I asked her the other day like do you want to go hang out with me at <laughs> this woman's house and like feed baby squirrels and she was like no not really i was like oh what would you rather do i'm like that sounds like the best day ever that's a bad example her and i are very good friends and we spend so much time together but i feel 
how do I say this? I'm like trying to talk about this without just like sharing too many details. I guess what I'm trying to say is at the end of the day, I've changed. Hobbies change. Things change. And the friendships are not as natural as they used to be. But sometimes it can be that I was burned really bad. You know, like back to middle school, I remember finding out that there was this girl that I was friends with and like we're still cordial to this day. I don't even know if she knows that I know these things, but she used to talk really, really, really poorly about me to other people. And like when I broke up with my boyfriend and seventh or eighth grade for like two weeks when we broke up she was immediately with him after and i just made that we just made that normal it was like oh yeah no it's fine which it was fine right like we were 13 or 12 and we're just barely learning what it is to like have feelings for someone and have them like you back but she was my best friend she was like one of my best friends and she was dating that's crazy that is so crazy that we just made that okay i remember being like wait what like i just broke up with him and what like i was like what are you saying to him against my back where that just happened now looking back like what the fuck that was not normal so things like that there was like another boy that i had liked again 12 years old and i found out years later because i became friends with this person's cousin they were like oh yeah he told me that um he always liked you too and i was like what and i remember the girl constantly being like yeah no i don't think he likes you oh look he let me borrow his jacket just like weird things so all of this to say like i feel like my perspective on friendships are that i'm like very optimistic and like i see the good in everybody and because of that i end up getting burned as well plenty of times i can't tell you how many times i've been burned to the point where it becomes a question of like am i the problem i'm sure i i have had moments where i am the problem but but then some of the things that would follow were just like, oh my gosh, why didn't you just like talk to me about what you were feeling? Like, for example, I have a tendency to feel pretty insecure in friendships. And I feel like this stems from things like middle school, like planting the seeds of friendship. I used to frequently have like one best friend and another best friend that didn't know each other. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, let's all hang out. We're going to love each other and be great friends. And then they would start talking about me behind my back. And like typically one of them was turning the other one against me. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm so loyal to you guys. Why are you guys doing this? So it's made me very like paranoid, I guess, in friendships. If anything seems off, I'm like, is everything okay? Did I do something wrong? Are you upset with me? And I get really anxious when I argue with friends. This is supposed to be about friendship break. Well, this is kind of about friendship breaks up, breakups. I'm just telling you guys like my experience and my perspective. I do feel like that's something I struggle with. And I still find myself going back and forth of like, did this friendship end and have these other friendships ended because of me? Like solely I'm the problem because you do have to look at a pattern and start to question like, okay, this keeps happening to me. Am I the problem? But then it's also like, okay, this keeps happening to me. Are they the problem? Are we both the problem? Like, why does it feel like this is such a pattern? And so it can be easy for me to start to blame myself. But then I'm like, I'm not the only person that's had a lot of friendship breakups. Like, actually, pretty much everyone I'm friends with now has had friendship breakups and, you know, where they've grown apart or whatever. So I don't know. Going back to issues that I have, yes, I can be a bit overbearing if I think that someone's mad. Like, I'm like, let's talk about it right now because I can't bear to imagine just like waiting until the weekend because it makes me that anxious. I can definitely be like that. I can be possessive, which is not a good quality. I, I get weird now when friends want to hang out. People that I've introduced want to hang out without me. And I totally know it comes from insecurity because of experiences that I've had in the past where somehow one of them turns them against me and I'm like why (laughs) you know it just it makes me it makes me nervous that's hard for me to admit because i feel like it's such a toxic and ugly trait to have but it is the truth and it's something that now as i near 30 years old i'm getting over um but gosh yeah i've struggled with that for a long time like i would very much so be like if you guys are gonna hang out can you like text me which is so annoying but definitely stemmed from insecurity which sucks because i feel like then i potentially stopped people from comfortably building a friendship outside of me so that was something i've struggled with i think i also 
not to like bring loss into it, but like let's bring loss into it because I I do feel like it's a huge part of my love language, not only in like relationships, but also friendship relationships is that I do feel like I don't have, well, now it's getting better, but I never really felt like I had a strong sense of family after my mom passed away. Specifically with women, this comment is like very much so geared towards like women, sister-like bonds, mother-like bonds, bonds like that. This is no dig at the family that I was speaking to at this time. This is not about that. This is like me just trying to look deep into myself and understand why I was so intense with my friendships and why I can be so intense. And I think that like when I get a really close girlfriend, that person, like I don't like to have a bunch of friends that I'm just sort of friends with. Like if we're friends, if I'm calling you one of my friends, it means like you are one of my people. You're not just like, oh, that's my friend. It's like, no, you're you're one of my people. Like, I take you in as, like, a sibling. And, like, for example, I remember when I was in middle school. <laughs> I'm still friends with this girl to this day. This was, like, my, this is my childhood best friend, Christina. Like, even just saying her name just, I mean, I've known this girl since we were seven. Oh, my God, that's over 20 years. Oh, I love Christina. I love her. She literally, I've, I experienced so many firsts in life with her and we still keep in touch to this day. And I remember I wrote in her yearbook when I was like 12 that I would take a bullet for her. And, you know, I was like listening to Green Day. I was like, I would literally take a bullet for you. I told my mom, I was like, yeah. So I told Christina that I would take a bullet for her because she's my best friend. And my mom was like, what the fuck? is why would you write that she was so mad at me like she almost was like i want you to take it back and i I think because my mom was like so protective she's like why the hell would you say that you would take a bullet for someone like now if anything ever happens it's now it's gonna be like you put in the fine print that i don't think my mom was actually that upset i think she was just trying to teach me a lesson about like taking a bullet for somebody and like saying things that's like how i think she was saying how our words have power and like those things are like, you know, it might not happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but our words hold a lot of weight. And my mom was definitely somebody that was like, she would like type an email and then she would type it again. And then she would type it again. Like she would keep retyping it because my mom really cared about the words that she would use and like the way it was perceived and the way people would process that information. So now looking back, like it really, it's always in my head now. Like I, I actually am very careful about who I say I'm going to take a bullet for just because I remember her reaction of just being like, you can't just say anything. Like if you say these things, you have to mean them. And do you really mean them? I think that's what she was trying to teach me. And obviously at the ripe age of 12, I was like, I would, I would give my soul. I would bear my bones for her. Now, obviously like (laughs) that sounds fucked up it's not now obviously like but it's more like I've just grown up and I understand how intense these things are just to say so that gives you an idea of the intensity that I can bring to the table in friendships and I think where I have gotten myself into trouble is that because I am very soul-bearing in my friendships, like you will always know if I'm upset about something, I'm not gonna like just slowly hold it in. I'm just like, hey, let's talk about this. I want you to know it really bothers me when you do this. Or I, uh, I don't know, I can be, I guess, overbearing. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of things that I've been told. But really, I don't think it came down to any of those things. I think I just valued friendship and I value friendship differently than some of the people that would have considered me their friend or their best friend or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? And again, every situation is so different, but there's no fault in those people for not having the capacity to like give the same energy back. And there's no fault in me for giving so much and expecting it back. Is that a fault, an expectation? I'm not sure friendships are so tricky. Yeah, I don't know. Because then I do also just feel ignorant sitting here saying like, their loss. <laughs> but to me, I'm like, it really is their loss. I'm a really great friend, but also like, I'm not. I can be, not that I'm not. I just tend to be a bit reclusive these days. And so sometimes I feel like my friends put more energy, at least now in my life, I feel like a lot of my friends put more energy into reaching out to me and making plans with me because truthfully, I'm not the greatest about it. And I don't know why. I think it's because over the years, 
and as more and more friendships have ended, I've really found the beauty in building a friendship with myself because it is true that at the end of the day, we all end up alone. (laughs) What? (laughs) Oh my gosh, this is so depressing. I'm saying like, we, right? Don't we, we're always alone at some point. It really is always just us at the end of the day, like the only one who you should feel the most comfortable, the most safest, the most authentic and enjoy the time with is yourself. I used to always need to be hanging out with friends. Always, 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 always. But again, yeah, as friendships ended and like I grew up and, you know, the people that I would be spending all my time with were the, were like the only people I was hanging out with. So when I lost them, I like felt like I lost everything. And again, I use the word loss like very lightly, but I, I feel like, fuck, I have no idea what I was saying. I lost the friends and I feel like. Oh, 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 okay, I remember. I was saying that I feel like I've lost a lot of friends and I had to spend a lot of time by myself. And so it taught me the art of really having like a great relationship with yourself. And it's crazy because there are so many people that are like, oh, I hate being alone. And I'm like, oh my God, being alone is so fun, especially when you have pets. Cause then you're like not really alone. Like you have company, but if you get on your phone and start texting or you go on TikTok, like they don't care but you still have like another soul and heartbeat in the same room as you, if that makes any sense. That just like want to cuddle you and love you. And then for the most part, they'll just leave you alone. For example, my cat is right here and I'm alone, but really I'm not alone because he's just literally laying next to me, hanging out with me and keeping me company. And he's getting annoyed. Did I annoy you? I'm sorry, were you relaxing? Yeah. I love you. I never like smoke in front of him, but I'm I'm telling you, I, I like I go outside and I come back and he acts like me after. Like I don't know what it is. He like gets all chill and like I'm like I know you're not getting second hand because I would never. I guess the question would be how do you deal with a friendship ending? How do you make new friends? How do you accept a new reality without them? Yada yada yada. And the truth is, I genuinely do believe when any relationship ends, like of any sort, whether it is a partner, a friend, a family member, you know, anything where there's like a definitive ending of like, hey, this is just like not making sense or you have a falling out. Like I always think it's so important to take time to mourn and to also take time to reflect because... I feel like in the past, I was either the type that was like, poor me, my life sucks, my friends don't love me anymore, or I was like, you know, fuck them. (laughs) Like, they, they burned me, I don't even care to reflect on this, like, I don't even want to think about it, upward and onward. Whereas now, as I'm older, I find myself really reflecting on, like, situations that made me feel great, and a lot of situations that didn't make me feel great, and moments where I felt like I was too much, and moments where I felt like... I was a great friend. I don't know. I just think it's good to reflect so that you kind of know how to bring your best foot forward in other relationships. And I know that this is typically something that people say when it comes to love and like boyfriend, girlfriend, 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 boy, whatever, like love. I feel like, you know, how people say like, I'm happy that like I was the ex that they like learned how to be a better partner for or whatever. I think the same thing applies to friendships. It's like we're constantly growing and evolving and showing up differently and we're becoming wiser. We're understanding people's emotions more. Um, We're understanding just different life experiences that are happening. And so I do feel like when a friendship ends for me now or I distance myself, I learn things that were okay and not okay and how to continue to be a better person because I always think that I have area, um, excuse me, I, I, I always feel like I have room to improve, but I also make sure to take the time to acknowledge like, hey, just because you know you did these things and these were areas that you needed to improve on, One, if they didn't talk to you about it, that's not your fault because you've always created a safe space to have those conversations. Two, um, that doesn't negate, is that the right word for that? That doesn't, yeah, it doesn't like take away from the experiences that you had, that you felt they didn't show up for you in the friendship. Like you both did wrong, you can both accept that, but like 
they also did wrong and your feelings are valid. And if they don't validate them or they're unapologetic in the same way that you are to them when those conversations are had, then it's kind of like, oh, that's not cool. You know, like I feel like I really showed up and instead of being met with equal understanding, it feels like this is, does that make sense? So yeah, I think just like spending time to reflect, how can I improve? What are areas that I handled really well? What are, and then start thinking about your other friendships. Like how am I treating those friendships? Am I possibly being negligent in these same areas? And what are things that are, I don't know. That's just what I feel like. I'm very analytical and I will get lost in my head and I will think, and I've been doing so much thinking. I think that once a friendship ends and you realize like, okay, this is just the new reality. I think it's important to always, I don't know, for me, like if a friendship has ever ended, I like to leave the line open. I'm never like, you can't ever talk to me again. It's like, we can follow each other. We can talk once every six months. We can never talk again. I mean, like whatever, but I want you to know that like, I'm always here just because we've decided to grow and go different ways like my line is always open i'll always answer your call because i have love for you and i want you to always feel like you have somebody even if it hurts you know yeah i feel like that's kind of all i have to say on this topic it's okay to grow apart it's okay to have a falling out it's okay to have different interests oh i gotta crack my back all of it is okay if you burned them that's not cool take a moment to reflect why you did that because that's fucked up and aside from that like we're all constantly growing we're all constantly changing we're all trying to become the best version of ourselves friendships and relationships that come into our life for one period are not always meant to follow through for the rest cherish the friendships that you do have make sure that you're hitting those love languages if you really do care about those people whether it's a new friendship an old friendship a couple years long friendship just have to treat those people with love and respect because they probably love you a lot but then again i don't fucking know because i think my perception on friendship is is skewed because i think my boyfriend has also told me that i just i like when i love i love really hard so i'm like i would do anything for you and they're like mine is conditional (laughs) i'm like that's fine maybe it's like not that deep (laughs) it's probably not that deep i am just don't take advice from me actually scrap this whole video like this is just my experience don't take any advice from this and how i process and handle things so that's gonna be it for this friendships ending and growing as a person and evolving chat i really didn't have any direction that i thought this would go i just kind of wanted to shoot the shit and see what would happen so i hope that you guys enjoyed this and enjoyed hanging out i would love to know what you guys want to hear about next i'm thinking of doing a video with ryan talking about our relationship but i'm also like i not like too much detail like i don't want to give away everything because i've heard people say like my relationship is private but not secret and i do feel like mine is kind of like that with ryan where like you guys see him and like we talk about things sometimes but you don't know like the things that we've gone through and so i do enjoy having that privacy but i do think it would be fun for us to just talk about like how we met how we fell in love things that we've learned in our relationship together i feel like that would be fun and that's peeling back a layer so that you guys can understand us a little bit more because all you guys see is sunshine and rainbows because it really is a lot of sunshine and rainbows but anyway i think that would be a fun topic I'm getting the munchies. I really want to have a cupcake right now. So I'm going to go do that. Thank you for hanging out with me. Let me know you guys how you feel about the video with Ryan. Maybe we can do that next week or the following. And yeah, this is so fun. Have a great rest of your night.